Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. I saw PR Props sculpting this a while back and thought it was a pretty amazing build and wanted to make one of my own. So once again, I hit up Etsy, bought a mask from PR Props. He made a V8 Ferrari 458 engine mask, basically. Um, he designed it off of the Ferrari engine and I saw his paint up on it and it was super clean and I knew I don't, I don't really do super clean. So I thought I would kind of make it a rusted kind of junkish looking, but still cool motor mass. So today we are painting up a PR props mask with a little bit of modifications. Let's get to building or painting or modding. This is the casting kit from PR Props. His casts are always super clean, well put together, and easy to assemble. I rough up some of the surfaces to super glue the parts to each other and get this build underway. As always, his links for socials and Etsy shop will be in the description down below. Everything he does is top notch. Please go to his shop and buy something from this amazing maker if you can, or at least check out his socials and leave him some positive feedback. Like I have stated in a lot of my builds, I have a massive head. So in order for this mask to come close to fitting me, I need to make some modifications to it to open up the neck area. I mark off the area I want to cut out, put a respirator on, turn on my rotary tool with a cutting wheel on it, and start slicing off the part. I get it close to the line, then switch over to a sanding drum and smooth it over to finalize the edge. After trimming the bottom, it's still a little small in terms of how much of my long face gets covered, so I decided to add some hoses to fill in this area around my cheeks. I put a routing bit on my rotary tool and drill out some holes for the tubes and PVC elbow joint I'm going to attach. I did have a little bit of a blowout, but I can fix it later by mixing the dust that I accumulate from sanding it with some super glue and making kind of a bondo to patch that tear. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area while cutting and sanding this resin. This stuff gets everywhere and the last place you want it to rest is inside your lungs. <laughs> The base paint color starts with black primer. Once that dries, I lightly dust it with a little silver, brown, and black spray paint to give an aged metal look. Then once that is dried, I tape off the parts I want to be red and spray that too. 
To get the rest of the little details to stand out, I hand painted the rest of it. I used ribbon buff, silver, and gold for some of the parts, paint pens on some areas that were easier to reach, and some Platifex acrylic paint for the remaining parts. This mask is probably going to end up getting over a dozen layers of paint and treatments that kind of just build up the layers to really sell the dirtiness and grunginess of what I want. I'm not mechanically inclined in any sense of the word, so I honestly can't tell you what these wires are or what they're for, but I know that looking at PR's reference and some other ones online, there should be wires running from these little connectors, so I super glue them into place and then hot glue those into the proper position on the mask. To make sure that everything looks old and dirty, I torch these vinyl tubings for color and for texture. Do this outside if you can. I am wearing a respirator and have an air vent on full blast. It puts out a nasty gas and you probably don't want to be breathing it in or sitting in it. I then string in some bright greenish yellow EL wire into the tube and around some other holes that I've drilled out already. There is nine foot of wires. So so I weave it all through the mask and then snip off the end when I get done, hot glue all over it to keep it all into place. I know you didn't think it was going to stay clean for too much longer, so first step of dirtying up the paint is some acrylic washes of brown and black over everything. Water down the acrylic, use a cheap beat up chip brush and smear it all over, especially in the cracks. Then wipe away the high points with a paper towel. I usually do about two or three passes to get the dirtiness build up that I want.
It's been a while since I've used my trusty go-to method for putting real rust on my props, Modern Masters Rust Metal Effects. I get it at the hobby store, you can buy it online, it's pretty awesome. It's a three-step process where you spread on an orange primer layer, then a iron layer gets put over the top of it, then a rust spray to activate it. So I spread it in random spots and give it an hour or so before I move on to the next step. Forgot to hit record for some reason, so I covered all the primer layer with the next step, which is putting on this thick layer of iron dense paint. After the layer is dry, the last step in the treatment is the activator spray bottle. This starts a chemical reaction with the iron that actually puts real rust on your prop. The variations in color and texture that I get from this stuff keeps me coming back from war because it adds that amazing rust detail that I want. Now the last step with a mask, as always for me, is strapping. I use some one inch elastic banding and glue it to some two millimeter EVA. The elastic then gets sandwiched between the foam and the mask. The foam increases the amount of surface area for the connection and it allows the elastic to lock into place and not rip off of the mask. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I'm always pleased every time I buy something from Jose. Please, 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 please go and support other makers. If they sell stuff somewhere and you can you can purchase it and support them in that way, please go out and do it. Jose is an amazing sculptor. Uh, and I when I saw him building this, I was like, yeah, I got to have that one. Um, I saw his paint job on this. It was super clean and crisp, like I said, and I didn't want to copy that. So I kind of junkified mine up in much props fashion, almost giving it like a Mad Max type vibe to it. Um, I put the tubing here and the, the little elbow joint so that I could run EL wire through it. And this also kind of pulls double duty in that it kind of masks off the fact that my head is ginormous compared to Jose's and it doesn't fit me perfectly. So it kind of fills in that dead space where it hangs a little low. Um, but yeah, maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to modify paint or just appreciate somebody else's work. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them, much props. I, I guess I'll put it on. It does light up, but you're probably not going to see it as well with the big lights on in here, but... Vroom, vroom. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks so much to the awesome people listed here. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube, please consider joining me on Patreon to help grow a bigger, better, more creative community for makers.